Good morning, Mackenzie Johnston with Tri-State Livestock News, bringing you your Thursday morning headlines concerning fair cattle markets. Sponsored by Sand Hills Beef Company, eat like a rancher. America first means buying directly from the producer. Be the change. To learn about Sand Hills Beef Company and all they have to offer, head on over to their website, sandhillsbeefco.com. Also sponsored by RCAF USA, fighting for independent American cattle producers. To sign the petition for the beef checkoff referendum, head on over to RCAF's website, or you can sign it at www.checkoffvote.com. The Spokesman Review has reported that Easter Day Farms, one of the largest farming and ranching families in Washington, filed for Chapter 11, Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection on Monday. This is the same Easter Day Farms that we have been talking about for quite some time now. This comes just weeks after Tyson Foods sued Easter Day Farms, alleging that the managers defrauded Tyson of $225 million by charging the company to feed 200,000 head of fictitious cattle. The lawsuit was joined Monday by Spokane-based Washington Trust Bank. An attorney with Washington Trust Bank, Trevor Pincock, told Franklin County Superior Court Judge Samuel Swanberg on Monday that the Easter Day family has been transferring assets and selling collateral in violation of its loan agreement. At the hearing in Pasco on Monday, the bank requested and received approval of a temporary restraining order against Easter Day Farms to inhibit the operation from selling crops or assets in violation of the loan agreement with the bank. Easter Days and Tyson have been working together for quite a few years now. Easter Day Farms would purchase feeder cattle, then feed them out, and Tyson would then reimburse Easter Day Farms for those costs. The cattle were then delivered to Tyson's packing plant, packing plant in Wallula, Washington. According to the lawsuit, Easter Day Farms claimed to have 186,000 head of cattle in their feed yard on October 3rd of 2020, valued at approximately $321 million. Nonetheless, when November and December rolled around, Tyson began to uncover discrepancies with those numbers. The Easter Day family had already put in independent management with full authority to run their operation. But despite this, Pincock still requested a temporary restraining order against the management of Easter Day Farms to prevent any moves other than normal business operations. Judge Swanberg went ahead and granted this request. Judge Swanberg stated uh, that a hearing is set for next week and if Easter Day Farms has not filed for federal bankruptcy protection at that time, the decision will be made as to whether or not a receivership should be put in place and who it should be. Well, the Wall Street Journal has reported that on Tuesday, Tom Vilsack said that farmers and ranchers are potential leaders in the new administration's battle against climate change. He believes that government-funded incentives could get farmers and agricultural companies to adopt climate-friendly practices without implementing increased regulation and in turn would make U.S. food more attractive in export markets. Vilsack emphasized the fact that these practices need to be voluntary and incentive-based for farmers and ranchers to be cooperative. President Biden has set a goal for the U.S. economy to achieve net zero emissions by 2050. Vilsack believes that capturing carbon in the soil and developing products made from agricultural, agricultural waste could contribute to this goal. According to Vilsack, if U.S. agricultural goods were produced in a more sustainable way, U.S. agricultural producers would have a competitive edge among global consumers hungry for food that is safe, tasteful, affordable, and raised using methods that do not harm the environment. The pandemic has shown the need for a more robust food supply chain and Vilsack believes that promoting a food system with more smaller facilities for slaughtering and processing livestock would be beneficial. The New Jersey Globe has reported that on Tuesday, U.S. Senator Cory Booker was appointed to the Senate Agriculture, Nutrition and Forestry Committee. Booker is only the second black American to hold a seat on the panel since it was established back in 1825. According to Booker, the U.S. food system is deeply broken. 
Family farmers are struggling and many family farms are disappearing while big agriculture continues to get bigger and continues to see increased profits. He believes that healthy fresh food has become hard to find and difficult to afford in both rural and urban communities. Booker looks forward to addressing the urgent concerns around family farms, big agriculture, and other important issues in the ag industry. A little background on Cory Booker. According to booker.senate.org, back in December of 2019, he unveiled the Farm System Reform Act. So this is a broad piece of legislation, but overall it has four core principles. Uh, first off, this legislation would impose an immediate moratorium on the construction of new CAFOs, confined animal feeding operations, and phase out the largest existing CAFOs by 2040. It would impose the liabilities and costs of pollution, accidents, and disasters on the agricultural conglomerates that control the market rather than on independent farmers who contract with them. The legislation would create a $100 billion fund to help farmers who are currently running CAFOs transition to other agricultural operations. And then finally, the legislation would strengthen the existing Packers and Stockyards Act to prohibit a range of contract terms and structures that let huge meat, meat buyers put farmers in a race for the bottom while denying them political and legal recourse. So there's a little background for you on Senator Booker uh, and what we might see while he is on the panel. Finally, National Beef Wire reported yesterday that Choice Box Beef ended the day at 235.28. That was down a buck 48. And then Select Box Beef ended the day at 223.39, and that was down 165. That is all I have for you guys this morning. I hope everyone had a great Wednesday. Have yourself a tremendous Thursday, and I will see everyone tomorrow morning.